Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be showing you how to make a holiday sweater. With this one, we take a bunch of classic themes, throw in some modern aesthetic, mix it in a blender, and voila! Holiday hoodie magic for you to enjoy. Speaking of enjoy, we've got hundreds of modern crochet designs for you to enjoy with even more coming, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on with the show, so without further ado... For this project, any category for yarn will work, but it's a total of 800 grams of yarn, and that's 1600 yards if you're stateside and the individual measurements will be on the screen. As for tools, a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us your favorite holiday movie. My favorite has to be Home Alone. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using 5 stitches for this project and they'll be as follows. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, and the trinity stitch. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 6mm hook and start off by making a chain that reaches from the top of our shoulder down to where we want the bottom of this cardigan to be, keeping in mind that we will have a bottom band as well. And I need a chain that's 20 inches or 51 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 75. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain two. There's one, and there's two. Now those two chains don't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain, and from here we're going to yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet, and then starting with the chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, we're going to half double crochet all the way down our chain. So insert your hook into that chain that we blocked off, we're going to yarn over, pull through that first loop. Once we have three loops on our hook, we're then going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. That is our first half double crochet, let's just do one more. Yarn over, insert your hook into that next chain, pull through. Once we have three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Continue to put one half double crochet into every chain. So now that we've made our way all the way down with our half double crochet row, we're now going to do more half double crochet rows, but from here on out they're going to be within the back loops, so let's get that started. Starting off every half double crochet row, we're going to need to do a chain 2. That doesn't count as a stitch, we just need the height, and that is our turning chain. And what we're going to do from here is yarn over. We're going to find the last stitch from our previous row, and insert only in through that back loop. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Now there's our first back loop half double crochet, let's do one more. Yarn over, find the next stitch, then insert only in through that back loop, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through all three. And that's it, we're going to continue to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch at the end of the row, do a chain two, flip our work, and we are going to continue with our back loop half double crochet rows with no increases and no decreases until this can reach from two inches past the tip of our shoulder over to the base of our neck. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can finish up our front panel together. Alright, so I'm back with the shoulder portion of my front panel. I have a total of 14 rows, and my width is just about 6 inches or 18 centimeters. And now what we're going to do is do some decreases so that our front panel has a nice curve. So from where we're at, we're going to start with a chain 2. Flip our work, and we're going to start with a decrease of three back loop half double crochets. So how we do that is start with a yarn over, and we're going to insert our hook into the last stitches back loop from our previous row. We're going to yarn over, 
pull through, also into that next stitches back loop, yarn over, pull through, and then lastly into that next stitches back loop, yarn over, pull through for a total of five loops on your hook. And from here, all we're going to do is yarn over and pull through all five of those loops forming our first stitch for this row, and that is our decrease of three back loop half double crochets. Now from here, just continue to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. At the end of the row, do a chain two, flip your work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three. All right, so I've just made my way all the way down with my back loop half double crochet row, and then made my way all the way back up, and we should have one, two, three stitches left. So now let's do our decrease of three. Start with the yarn over, insert your hook into that third to last back loop, pull through, second to last back loop, pull through, and then that last back loop, pull through. Now we should have one, two, three, four, and five loops on our hook. So just yarn over, pull through all five of those loops, and that forms our next decrease of three. Now from here, we're just gonna keep repeating our two previous rows, until this portion that we have reaches mid chest. So since we're along the decrease end, I'm just gonna do one more decrease off with you guys. So starting with a chain two, and then we're gonna flip our work. To start our decrease, we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch's back loop, pull through, into that next stitch's back loop, pull through, and then into that last, pull through. Now we should have five loops on our hook, so just yarn over, pull through all five, and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. I will meet you back once we have this all finished up. All right, so I am back with my decrease rows for my front panel. I have a total of 22 rows now, and my width is just about nine inches or 23 centimeters, and I did do a chain up one and cut. Now from here, we're going to make one more panel that is exactly the same, and then I will meet you back once we have that second one all finished up. All right, I am back and both of my front panels are all finished up. And now that we have both, we can get started on our back panel, and it's gonna be really easy, so I'm just gonna talk you guys through it. Getting started on the back panel, we are all gonna start by making the same initial chain that we did when we started off our front panel. So if you guys have my numbers, I made a total of 75 chains. So for my back, I'm going to make another 75 chains. And then from there, just do back loop half double crochet rows until this reaches from two inches past the tip of our shoulder, across our back, and then two inches past the other tip of our shoulder with absolutely no increases and no decreases. I'm gonna get that back panel all finished up and then I will meet you back. All right, so I'm back with the entirety of my back panel. I have a total of 41 rows and my width is just about 18 inches or 56 centimeters. I did do a chain up of one and cut and now that we have this all finished up, the next thing we're gonna do is single crochet across the tops of all of our panels so that it's much easier to do our shoulder seam. So since we're looking at the back, let's get started on the back. We're all gonna start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of the back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And all we're going to do from here is alternate between one to two single crochets into every side half double crochet row, making our way all the way across. So let's get that started. Start by inserting your hook into that first side row. You're going to insert your hook into that top loop, and we're all going to start with just one single crochet. Just like that. And now this is my next side half double crochet row. We're now going to insert our hook into there with two single crochets. So into that top loop with one, and then into that same top loop with a second single crochet. And now that we have that, we're just gonna continue on with that stitch sequence, making our way all the way down, so let's just do one more set. Find that next side row, insert your hook into that top loop with one single crochet, and then find that next side row, insert your hook into that top loop with two. So there's one, and then there's two and keep doing this, making our way all the way down, and then do a chain of one and cut. All right, so we have just made our way all the way across with our single crochet row. I did do a chain of one and cut, and now we're gonna do the same thing on the tops of our front panels as well. 
So taking a look at our front panel, we're all going to start by inserting a hook into the corner stitch. And then from here, just like how we did the back panel, alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, making our way all the way across. Just working into the shoulder portion, once we reach our first decrease row right here, we are going to do a chain up of one and cut. And then once we have this, do the same thing that we just did here on the other side, and then I will meet you back to seam our shoulders. All right, so the single crochets across the top of both of our front panels is all finished. So now let's get started on seaming the shoulders. All right, so getting started with seaming our shoulders, we are all going to start by placing our front panel on top of our back panel, making sure that the decrease side that we have is along the inside. And then we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We are next going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through everything, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And from here, we're just going to single crochet across, making sure we're working into both the front and the back panel at the same time. So start by finding that first stitch into the front panel and insert your hook into there. Find the next stitch into the back panel insert your hook into there and once we have all three of those loops on our hook we're going to single crochet them together just like that let's do this again into the next stitch into the front panel insert your hook and then into the next stitch into the back panel insert your hook and single crochet and that's it continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left do a chain up of one and cut and then go ahead and seam the other shoulder together All right, so now that our shoulders are all seamed up, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is start by seaming our sides. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is insert our stitch marker into any stitch that we want where we want our armhole to start. So I've inserted my stitch marker into the 22nd stitch from the top, and that's just about seven inches or 19 centimeters. And then to seam our sides, we're gonna be inserting our stitch marker into the front and back panel along the bottom corner. But we are first gonna to wanna to make sure that our work is still flipped wrong side out, meaning the seam that we have in the shoulders is still along the outside. So now that our hook is into both the front and the back panel, we are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through everything, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And now from here, it's going to be the same single crochet seam that we did for the shoulder, so let's just do the first few. We're going to start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel, insert your hook into there, and then find that next available stitch into the back panel, insert your hook into there, and then single crochet them together. Let's do that again. Into the first available stitch into the front panel, insert your hook, and then also into that next available stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and then single crochet. And continue to seam our way all the way up until we reach our stitch marker. Do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything that we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that everything is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our sleeve. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure our work is flipped right side out now. And then we're gonna start by inserting our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam. So this is mine right here, and I'm gonna insert my hook. Next, we're gonna take our secondary color, insert that onto our hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And right now we're just going to single crochet, making our way all the way around our armhole. So start by finding that first available stitch, insert your hook into there with just one single crochet, and then into that next stitch, insert your hook with another single crochet. And that's it. I will meet you back once we made our way all the way around our armhole, putting one single crochet into every stitch. All right, so we've just made our way all the way around with our single crochet row. And now just to close this off, we're gonna slip stitch it into that chain space that we made when we started off this row. So we're gonna insert our hook into that chain space. You should have two loops on our hook and all we're gonna do is yarn over, pull through both of those loops. And that's that. From here, we're all going to make an odd number chain the length that we want our sleeve to be, keeping in mind that we will have a cuff as well. So I've already measured mine out and I need a total of about 16 inches or 41 centimeters. So I'm gonna start with making a chain of 55. All right, so now that we have our chain, we can now get started on our Trinity stitches. So how that's gonna work is we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're gonna insert with a single crochet first. 
So we're going to bring our hook over into that chain. We're going to insert our hook. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two. Now to do the first trinity stitch of every row, we're going to start by inserting a hook into that same stitch that our single crochet is in. So into that same first stitch, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, to get two loops on our hook. Now we're going to do this into the next two stitches as well. So inserting your hook into that following stitch, yarn over, pull through to get three loops on our hook, and then we want four, so we're going to insert our hook into that following stitch as well. Yarn over, and pull through. Now all together we should have one, two, three, and four loops on our hook. What we're going to do from here is yarn over and pull through all four of those loops. So just hook that on, and pull through. Now to close off every trinity stitch, we are going to chain, but for the trinity stitches, we are going to want to make sure that we're using a medium to loose grip because otherwise the following rows can be really difficult to work into because it could be a little too tight. So from where we're at, all we're going to do is loosely yarn over and pull through, and this is what we should have. Now let's do our next trinity stitch. Now to get started on our second trinity stitch and all of the following ones, we're all going to start by inserting a hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch is worked into. So as you guys can see, this stitch that I have right here is taken up by my last trinity stitch. So I'm going to start by inserting my hook into there, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Like I said for the previous trinity stitch, we're going to want four loops on our hook, so let's do this two more times. Inserting your hook into the following stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then into that following stitch, yarn over, and pull through. Now once we have four loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through all four, and then to close off our trinity stitch, we're going to do a chain one. And that's it. Let's do the next one. First thing we're going to do is start by inserting a hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into. So this is mine right here. What I'm going to do is insert my hook into there, pull through, into that following stitch, pull through, and then into the stitch right after that, pull through. Now once we have four loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through all four, and then to close it off, just chain one. Now all together we should have one, two, three trinity stitches all finished up. Now let's do the next one just a little bit quicker, let you guys do the rest of the row on your own. So insert your hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitches worked into, pull through for two loops. Into that following stitch, pull through for three loops, and then into the stitch right after that, pull through for four loops. Once we have all four, we're going to yarn over, pull through all four, and chain one. And we're going to continue to do this until we have just two stitches left. So I've just made my way all the way down with my first trinity stitch row and should have two stitches left. Now, our last trinity stitch is always going to be worked just a little bit differently than the rest of our trinity stitches because it's the end of our row. So how we're going to do that is, just like the other ones, insert your hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitches worked into. This is mine right here, so I'm going to insert, pull through. We still want to have four loops on our hook, so into that following stitch, which should be our second to last chain, we're going to insert, pull through, and then also into that last chain, yarn over and pull through. Now once we have those four loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through all four, and then from here we would typically do a chain one, but since this is the last stitch, we're going to be single crocheting into that last stitch. So this is my last stitch right here. I'm going to insert with one single crochet to close off our first row and to keep the edge nice and blunt. And now that we're at the base, we're going to be slip stitching it into that next available stitch that we have. So this is my next stitch that I have right here. I'm going to insert my hook into there. And then once we have those two loops on our hook, all we're going to do is yarn over and pull through both of those loops to close off our row one. Now to work our way up to the next row, we're going to slip stitch up that next available stitch, just like that, and then flip our work. 
and this is going to be more trinity stitch rows and we aren't going to be having any increases or decreases so it's just going to be a repeat of our first row now i'm just going to remind you guys how we're going to start and end off this row so what we're going to do is find that last stitch from our previous row and start with a single crochet so insert your hook pull through and pull through two now there's our first single crochet and now to do our trinity stitch to start off the first one, we are always going to be inserting a hook into that same stitch that our single crochet is into. So insert your hook into there, pull through, insert your hook into that following stitch, pull through, and then into that following stitch as well, pull through. And now that we have four loops on our hook, all we're going to do is yarn over, pull through all four, chain one to close off this first trinity stitch. Let's do the next one. Start by inserting your hook into that last stitch that our previous trinity stitches worked into. So into here, we're going to insert and pull through. Into that following stitch, insert and pull through. And since we still want four loops on our hook, into that following stitch and pull through. Once we have four loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through all four, chain one, and continue. I'll meet you back when we have just two stitches left just to show you guys how we're going to do our last one once more. Alright, so we've made our way all the way down with our row two. Now just as a really quick tip, I did say that we wanted to work our way down until we had two stitches left. Now in case if this looks like you only have one stitch left, if you flip your work over, we should have one, two stitches. This last stitch could look like it's a little bit tucked underneath, but that's because it's our single crochet from our previous row. But that's fine if yours looks like mine. We can get started on the last one. So what we're going to do, after we do our chain, we're going to insert our hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitches worked into. Yarn over and pull through into that second to last stitch. Insert, pull through, and then into that last stitch as well. We're going to insert and pull through. Now once we have those four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four, and once we have just one loop left on our hook, we're going to single crochet into that last stitch just to keep this edge nice and even. So insert your hook, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and that's how we are always going to end our trinity stitch row. Now since we're here, I'm just going to get started on the next row with you guys, and the rest is just going to be a repeat. So just chain one, flip our work, and then start by single crocheting into the last stitch from our previous row. And then to do our trinity stitch, insert your hook into that same stitch that our single crochet is into, pull through, into that following stitch, pull through, and into the stitch after that, pull through. Should have four loops on our hook, so we're going to yarn over, pull through all four, and chain one to finish off that one trinity stitch. Continue to do our trinity stitches, making our way all the way down, remembering that we end our last trinity stitch with a single crochet, and then connect it into the base the same way that we just did. Now we're just going to keep repeating those two rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base. And then I will meet you back so that we can seam our sleeve together. I just made my way all the way around with my trinity stitch rows. I don't have any more stitches left to work into. And now we're going to seam it together. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out. And now that our work is flipped wrong side out, we're going to start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And then from here, we're going to pull through to a chain up of one to secure. And now this is going to be a single crochet seam. So the same seam that we've done for the shoulders and the side. So let's just do the first one together. So start by finding that first available stitch that we have into the front panel and insert your hook. Find that next available stitch we have into the back panel. Insert your hook into there and then single crochet them together. And that's it. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left and then do a chain up of one and cut. So now that our sleeve is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our cuff. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that our sleeve is now flipped right side out, meaning the seam that we have is along the inside. And then we're going to be inserting our hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom of our sleeve. So from here, since I want my cuff to be the same color as my sleeve, I'm going to grab my secondary color, insert that onto my hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And now I'm going to need my sleeve to cinch for the cuff, so I'm going to be decreasing into every side row. So let's get that started. 
Now start by finding our first side row. This is mine right here. I'm gonna find that top loop and insert my hook into there. Yarn over, pull through. And next we're gonna find our next side row. Find that top loop, insert your hook into there, pull through. And now that we have three loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over, pull through all three. Now that's our decrease of two single crochets. Let's do that again. This is my next side row that I have right here. I'm gonna find that top loop, insert my hook, pull through, and then find my next side row, find that top loop, insert my hook, yarn over, and pull through. Once we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three, and that is it. We're gonna to continue to decrease, making our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space and I will meet you guys back to get started on the length of our cuff. All right, so now that our single crochet row is all finished up, the next row we're gonna have to do is a half double crochet row. So since we slip stitched into that chain space, what we're gonna do from here is chain two. Now that doesn't count as a stitch, that's just the height that we want. And from here, all we're gonna do is yarn over, insert your hook into that following stitch with a half double crochet. And that's it. Continue to put one half double crochet into every stitch and I will meet you back at the end of this row. So we've just made our way all the way around putting one half double crochet into every stitch. Now just to close this row, we're gonna to need to slip stitch into that second chain that we made when we started off this row. So start by counting up one, two chains, and then into that second chain, we're gonna insert, yarn over, pull through everything, and that is how we connect our row. Now our next row is going to start with our ribbing and that's going to be front and back post double crochets. So to start that off, do a chain two. Still doesn't count as a stitch, we just want the height. And we're gonna start with the yarn over. We're gonna start by finding that first half double crochet from our previous row. So not that chain two, but into that following stitch, we're gonna bring our hook underneath the body of that half double crochet. Now once we have that, we're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now that's how we do our first front post double crochet. Now let's do our back. Yarn over, bring our hook down, bring our hook into that gap, and then over that next half double crochet. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we should have a front post and one back post double crochet. Let's do that again. Starting with the front post double crochet, we're gonna yarn over, and then we're gonna insert our hook underneath the body of that next half double crochet from our previous row. So insert it underneath, and then we're gonna yarn over and pull through. Once we have those two loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then let's do our back post. So yarn over, and now we're gonna bring our hook underneath our work, through that gap, and then over that next half double crochet that we have. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And from here, we're gonna continue to alternate between one front post double crochet and one back post double crochet, making our way all the way around. When we don't have any more stitches left, slip stitch into that second chain that we made when we started off this row, and then I will meet you back. All right, so we made our way around with our first front and back post double crochet row. And from here, we're just going to continue to extend our ribbing until we have the length of the cuff that we want. So I'm just gonna show you guys how we're gonna get started on the next row. Let's get to the rest of the rows on your own. So after we slip stitched into that second chain, we're going to do another chain two. That still doesn't count as a stitch. That's just the height that we want. And we're gonna yarn over. We're gonna be working in the same direction that we were already working in, so do not turn your work. And the first stitch that we should have should be a front post double crochet. And since we want to extend the ribbing, we're just gonna do a front post double crochet into that stitch. So bring your hook underneath that first stitch from our previous row, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then into that next stitch should be a back post. So we're gonna yarn over and then do a back post into there. So bring your hook underneath and over, and then finish up our back post double crochet. And from here, we're just gonna continue on with our front and back post double crochets, making sure that we are extending the ribbing for as long as we want the cuff to be. I'll meet you guys back once we have this one all finished up. And then once we have this one done, go ahead and do the same thing that we just did here on the other side. And then I will meet you back when we have both of our sleeves all finished up. All right, so I'm back and I'm all finished with my cuff. 
Now, including my first single crochet row, I have a total of five rows, and this is just about two inches or five centimeters. And once we have this all finished up, go ahead and do the same thing that we just did here on the other side, and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so my sleeves are all finished up, and now we're ready to get started on our bottom band. So the first thing we're gonna do is do a single crochet row along the bottom. So start by inserting your hook into the bottom corner stitch of one of our front panels. Insert your primary color yarn onto your hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. And all we're going to do is alternate between one to two single crochets into every side half double crochet row, making our way all the way around until we reach this corner over here. So let's get the first one started. This is my first side row, so I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop with just one single crochet. This is my next side row, and I'm going to find that top loop and then insert with two single crochets. So there's one, and then there's two, and that's it. Just keep alternating between one to two single crochets, making our way all the way across. So now that our single crochet row with our primary color is all finished, the next thing we're gonna do is do a half double crochet row with our secondary color. So let's start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch. Insert your yarn onto your hook, and we're gonna pull through. And all we're gonna do is start this row off with a chain two that doesn't count as a stitch, that's just a turning chain. And from here, we're gonna yarn over and just insert your hook into that first available stitch with a half double crochet. Yarn over into that next stitch with another half double crochet, and that is it. Continue to put one half double crochet into every stitch, and I will meet you back at the other corner. So now that we've made our way all the way around with our half double crochet row, we're now going to start working on the ribbing for the bottom band. And it's just going to be a bunch of front and back post double crochets. So from where we ended, we're going to get started with our first front post double crochet row. And that's going to start with a chain two and then flip our work. Now working into our previous half double crochet row, we're going to find that second stitch. So not this outside stitch because we need the edges to be clean. But finding that second half double crochet, we're going to start with the yarn over. And then we're going to bring our hook underneath the body of that half double crochet and then through the other side. So not working into the top loops, we're going to insert our hook underneath that half double crochet and through the other side. And from there, we're going to yarn over, pull through, and then double crochet per usual. So that's going to be a yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Now there is our first front post double crochet. Now our next post is going to be a back post double crochet. So that's going to start with a yarn over as well. And then we're going to bring our hook underneath our work and then over that next half double crochet that we have. So bring our hook underneath into that gap. Now we're going to bring our hook over that next half double crochet and then through the other side, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Now all together we should have one front post and one back post double crochet. Let's do this again. Yarn over. The next stitch that we should have should be a front post double crochet to do. So find that next half double crochet. Insert your hook underneath the body of that half double crochet. Pull through, pull through two, pull through two. And then let's do another back post. Yarn over, bring your hook underneath your work and over that next half double crochet and through the other side. Once we have that, we're gonna yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Now all together, we should have one front post, one back post, one front post, and one back post double crochet all finished up. And we're just gonna keep repeating our front and back post double crochets, making our way all the way to the other side until we have one stitch left. So let's just do the next set a little bit faster. So starting with the yarn over, insert your hook behind that next half double crochet with one front post double crochet. And then yarn over again, bring our hook underneath our work, over that next half double crochet, pull through, pull through two, pull through two for back post double crochet. And I'll meet you guys back at the end of this row. So we've made our way all the way down with our front and back post double crochet rows. I've left my last stitch, and now we're going to do one half double crochet just to make sure that this edge is nice and even. So we're all going to start with the yarn over and then just half double crochet 
into the last stitch from our previous row. And that's going to be how we end every front and back post double crochet row. Now since we're here, I'm just going to show you guys how we're going to work our way up to the next row. And that's always going to start with the chain 2 and then flip our work. Now the starting stitch could be a little bit different for everyone, so I'm just going to talk you guys through it. We're going to want to extend the ribbing that we have. So whatever our first stitch looks like, that is going to be the stitch that we do. So as you guys can see, mine looks like a front post double crochet, so I will be doing a front post double crochet into there to extend it. But if yours looks like a back post double crochet, that is fine as well. Just make sure that you're doing a back post double crochet into yours. And just to show you guys again, my next stitch looks like a back post double crochet, so I will be doing a back post double crochet into there to extend it. And that's it. We're just going to continue to extend our ribbing that we have for our bottom band, leaving the last stitch and just half double crochet into there to keep the edges nice and straight. And we're just going to continue on with these rows until we have the bottom band length that we want. Do a chain up of one and cut once we have that and then I will meet you back. All right, so I am back and my bottom band is all finished. Now all together, including our single crochet row, I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, and six rows. And my bottom band is just about two inches or five centimeters. Now we can get started on the front band. So to get started with our front band, we're gonna need to single crochet from the bottom corner all the way up and around until we reach the other front panel's bottom corner. And we're gonna need to switch out our colors between our bottom band and our front panel. If you guys switched out your colors, if not, you guys can just make your way all the way through with the single crochets. So I'm gonna start by inserting my hook into the corner stitch. And since I use my secondary color for the bottom band, I'm going to grab my secondary color. I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook. I'm going to pull through and then do a chain up of one to secure. Now I should have a couple side half double crochets to work into. So we're just gonna alternate between one to two single crochets into each of those until we reach our first primary color row. So let's get that started. This is my first side half double crochet right here. So I'm gonna insert my hook into there with just one single crochet. And then into my next side half double crochet, I'm gonna insert my hook into there with two single crochets. So there's one and then there's two. Let's do that again. This is my next side half double crochet. Go ahead and insert your hook into there with one. And this is my next side half double. Insert your hook into there with two. Now continue on with that stitch sequence until we have just one side half double crochet row left. So this is mine right here. Now working off of my stitch sequence, I just have to do one single crochet into that last side row that I have for my bottom band. If you guys have two, go ahead and do your first single crochet. And then when we're about to do our last, we're going to need to switch out our colors. So start by inserting your hook into there. We're going to yarn over and pull through. Now once we have those two loops on our hook, instead of yarning over and pulling through, we are going to insert our primary color onto our hook so that this stitch can end on our primary color just so we have a really clean color transition. So from here, grab your primary color, make a slip knot, insert that onto our hook, and then from here, we're going to pull our primary color underneath our two secondary colors, just like that. And then from here, we can cut our secondary color and then tie the two tail ends together. And then once we have that, we should be working into our front panel. So we're just gonna start with one single crochet into that side single crochet row that we had when we started off our bottom band. So go ahead and insert your hook with just one single crochet. And then from here, just put one single crochet into every stitch until we reach our decreased portion of our front panel and then I will meet you back. All right, so now that we have single crocheted all the way up till we reach our decreased portion of our front panel, all we're going to do is insert our stitch marker into that last stitch. And then we should have some side half double crochet rows to work into. So you guys know the drill, just alternate between one to two single crochets into every side half double crochet row. And then from there, single crochet, making our way all the way down. Once we reach our front panel again, 
alternate between one to two single crochet into every side row. Once we reach the first stitch that we have for this side of our front panel, insert your stitch marker into there so that both of these can match, and then just single crochet all the way down, making sure that we switch out our colors once when it comes to the bottom band. I'll meet you guys back once we reach this bottom corner. All right, so we are back and we have just finished up our single crochet row that went all the way up and around our front panels. Now from here, we're gonna start working on our front band and we're gonna need to start by inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch. And then we're going to grab our primary color, insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then we're gonna do a chain two. Now that chain two doesn't count as a stitch. That's just our turning chain. And from here, we're gonna be putting one half double crochet into every stitch until we are just one stitch before our stitch marker. So starting with the yarn over, go ahead and insert your hook into that first stitch with a half double crochet. Let's do the next one. Yarn over into the next with a half double crochet. And I'll meet you guys back when we have just one stitch right before our stitch marker. So we just made our way all the way down with our half double crochet row. And now we're gonna do a decrease of two half double crochets. So we're gonna start with the yarn over and insert our hook into that following stitch that we have. Yarn over, pull through, and then also insert your hook into the stitch right after that, which is our stitch marker stitch. So insert, pull through, and then once we have four loops, yarn over, pull through all four. And that's how I do our decrease of two. Now from here, we are gonna do more front and back post double crochets for the front band, but since we're along the top, we are gonna to have to do some decreases just so that we can keep up with our neckline. So to get started on the next row, chain two and flip our work. Now after we flip our work, we're gonna do a decrease of two front post double crochets. So how that's gonna work is start with the yarn over and then not counting that first stitch that we have because we want that to count as just a straight line edge, but underneath the second and third half double crochet from our previous row, we're gonna work a front post double crochet. So we're gonna skip that first stitch and then insert your hook underneath that second and also that third stitch. And once our hook is underneath both of those, we're gonna continue on with our front post double crochet per usual. So we're gonna yarn over, pull through, three loops on our hook, and then just yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, pretty simple. And from there, we're going to put one back post double crochet into the following stitch, and then just keep alternating between one front post double crochet and then one back close double crochet until we have one stitch left. At the end of the row, end our row with a half double crochet, chain two, flip our work, and then I will meet you guys back. All right, so we've just made our way all the way down with our front and back close double crochet row, ended this row with a half double crochet, and I just wanna remind you guys how we're gonna get started. So chain two, and then from here, we're going to do whatever our previous row looks like. So since this looks like a back post double crochet, I'm going to do a back post double crochet just to extend it. And then into the following stitch, since it looks like a front post, I will do a front post. And continue to extend our ribbing, making our way all the way down until we have two stitches left, and then I will decrease with you guys just once more. Alright, so we are now at the end of our third row, which is our second front and back post double crochet row. And I have left the last two stitches. Here's my second to last, and here's my last. So from here, we're going to do another decrease, and this is going to be dependent on what your last stitch is. Since this stitch that I just finished up was a back post double crochet, I'm now gonna do a decrease of two front post double crochets. But if you ended on a front post double crochet, then you guys are gonna do a decrease of two back post double crochets just to keep up with the ribbing. But it's gonna be done pretty much the same way. We're just gonna be inserting our hook, underneath the second to last and underneath that last stitch pull through pull through two pull through two now to close off every row we're just going to half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row just like that and since we're along the top if you guys want to keep going with your front band chain two flip your work and then start with a decrease and then continue on to extend your ribbing for as long as you want your front band to be I'm actually at the width that I want my front band to be, which is just about an inch and a half or three centimeters. So I'm going to do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat everything that I just did here on the other side. 
so I will meet you guys back once we have both of our front bands all finished up. Okay, so now that our front bands are finished on both sides, we can now get started on our hood. And we're going to need to single crochet along our hood again. So starting with our primary color, you're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of our front band. And then we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook. Pull through, do a chain up of one. Now all we're going to do is alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. And then from there, just one single crochet into every stitch. So just to do the first few side rows, insert your hook into that first stitch with one single crochet. Insert your hook into that next side row with two single crochet. And that is it. We're just going to continue to do our single crochet row, making our way all the way around. And once we reach the corner stitch of this side, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we have just finished up our single crochet row, working our way all the way around the neck hole that we made. And now we're going to single crochet around it just one more time with our secondary color to make it nice and clean. And then also so that we can extend our hood just a little bit because we're going to be doing some increases. So again, start by inserting your hook into the corner stitch of our front panel and insert your secondary color yarn onto your hook. Pull through and then do a chain up of one to secure. And from here, all we're going to do is alternate between one single crochet and then an increase of two single crochet into every stitch. So let's do the first few. Now this is my first single crochet that I have right here. I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch with one single crochet. Now into that following stitch, I'm going to insert my hook into there with two single crochets. So into that stitch, there is one. And then into that same stitch, because we need to increase, a second single crochet. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch, insert with just one. Into the next stitch, insert with two single crochets. So there is one, and then there is two. And we're going to continue on with this, making our way all the way around. I'll meet you guys back once we reach this corner over here. All right, so now that our single crochet row with our increases and our secondary color is all finished up, we can get started on our trinity stitches for our hood. And since we already know how to do that, I'm just going to let you guys do all that on your own. But the only thing that I want to make sure is that we have an odd number of stitches for this secondary color single crochet row. And if we don't, that's okay. Go ahead and just do an extra single crochet into that last stitch. And we're only doing that because our trinity stitch needs to be in odd numbers. So all we're going to do from here is chain one, flip our work, and then make our way all the way down doing our trinity stitch, making sure that the last one ends on a single crochet. And we're just going to keep going back and forth with our trinity stitch rows with no increases and no decreases until this reaches the top of our head. And then I'll meet you guys back to let you guys know just how many rows I ended up having and how we're going to seam it together. All right, so I'm back with the entirety of my hood. I have a total of 36 rows, and that is counting from our first single crochet row. Now that's a total of about 14 inches or 36 centimeters, and now we can seam our hood together. So we're going to want to start by flipping our hood inside out because we want our seam to be along the inside. We're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of the back panel, since my hook is already in through the front panel, and we're going to pull through. And this is going to be a single crochet seam, so the same way that we've seamed pretty much everything else so far, so let's get this started. Start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and then find that next stitch into the back panel and single crochet them together. And that's it. We're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left and then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so now that we are all finished up seaming our hood, the last thing we're going to have to make is our pocket and I already have one here done. So let's just do the next one together. So we're all going to start by making a chain the length that we want our pocket to be, keeping in mind that we will have a trim as well. Now I want my pocket to be just about 6 inches or 15 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 20. Now that we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain and do a chain 2. And from here we're going to half double crochet all the way down our chain. So starting with a half double crochet, we're going to insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook. So go ahead and insert. Pull through. Once we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three, and continue to put one half double crochet into every chain. 
Now that we put one half double crochet into every chain, we're now going to be doing a back loop half double crochet row. So since we already know how to do this, just as a reminder, we're going to start with a chain two, flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. At the end of the row, do another chain two, flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch again. And from here, we're just going to continue doing back loop half double crochet rows until we get the width that we want our pocket to be. I'll meet you guys back once when I have my width, and then we can get started on the trim. All right, so I'm back with the width of my pocket. I have a total of 11 rows, and this width is just about five and a half inches or 14 centimeters. And now what we're going to do is single crochet along the top, preparing for our trim. So from where we're at, we're just going to chain one. And then we're going to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side half double crochet row. So find that first side half double crochet row, insert your hook into that top loop with just one single crochet, and then into that next side half double crochet, find that top loop and then insert with two single crochets. And that's it. Continue to do this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into. And we do need to make sure that we have an odd number of single crochets. So if you have an even number, go ahead and just add one extra single crochet into that last side row. And we just need to make sure that we have an odd number because the Trinity stitch that we will be doing right after needs to have an odd number. So go ahead and get that done, do a chain of one and cut, and then I will meet you guys back. All right, so my single crochet row is all finished up and now we're going to work on our trim. So start by inserting your hook into the top corner stitch with your secondary color, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and just make your way down, putting one single crochet into every stitch. And now that we have our single crochet row with our secondary color all finished up, we're just going to do our trinity stitches for as tall as we want this trim to be. So from here, I'm going to do an additional three trinity stitch rows, and then I will meet you guys back. All right, so I'm all finished up with my trinity rows. Like I said, I did a total of three trinity rows, and now my total height is now seven inches or 18 centimeters. The last thing we're gonna have to do for our pocket is just single crochet along the edges just to make it nice and clean and also a lot easier to sew to the cardigan. So it's gonna be pretty easy, so I'm just gonna get started off with you guys. Start by inserting your hook into the top corner stitch, and we're going to switch out our colors just like how we did for the front band. So we're gonna start with our secondary color, and then primary color all the way around, and then secondary color once we reach the trim again. So I'm gonna insert my secondary color onto my hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and then from here, we're gonna alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. So start by finding your first side row. This is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook with just one single crochet. Find your next side row. This is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook into there with two. So there's one. There's two, and then I just have one more side trinity stitch row left to work into, so find that top loop. Insert your hook into there with one. And you guys are going to continue to do that until we reach our single crochet row with our secondary color. This is mine right here. And into that single crochet row, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, and then we're going to switch out our colors once we have just two loops left on our hook. So inserting your primary color onto your hook, we're gonna pull that loop underneath the two loops that we have on our hook so that this stitch ends on our primary color. From here, we're going to cut our secondary color, tie the two tail ends together, and then we're just going to continue to single crochet all the way around. So all we're gonna do is put one single crochet into every stitch. Once we reach the bottom, alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, single crochet our way back up, and then close us off by alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row with our secondary color. Once we reach this top corner, do a chain up a one and cut, make a second piece, and then I'll meet you guys back once we have both of these all finished up. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up both of my pockets. And from here, we're going to attach it into our front panels. Now there's not gonna be any real rhyme or reason to this. You guys can use your tapestry needle or your hook, whatever you guys prefer. I'm just gonna give you guys a couple tips and let you guys do the rest on your own. So what I like to do when it comes to attaching my pocket onto my piece is first start by aligning our bottom single crochet row with the bottom single crochet row that we have within the front panel. And this can be as close to the front border and as far out as you guys would like. You guys place it wherever you want. 
but that becomes a really good base to make sure that our pocket doesn't become sideways or a little slanted, but just make sure that we're working there. And then the last bit of advice that I have for you guys is just make sure when we are seaming our trim on, we are using the trim color because otherwise you'll most likely be able to see the other color underneath the trim color. But go ahead and get that all seamed up and then I will meet you guys back. All right, so I've just attached my pocket and I went ahead and did the same thing on the other side and we are now all finished. The last thing we're gonna have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. Check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.